Hello and welcome. Uh, this is video number four in a five-part series on uh, maritime exploration. And in this video, the focus is going to be on Portuguese and Spanish efforts at exploration, uh, in particular, uh, with the emphasis being uh, exploring heading west uh, away from their countries. So basically crossing the Atlantic Ocean and heading west. And we'll just talk a little bit about uh, what they were able to achieve uh, with those efforts. Uh, this will be a little bit of a, a lightning round uh, for today. Uh, we'll bounce back and forth between a variety of different uh, Spanish and Portuguese explorers. In my final video, uh, we'll touch on uh, French, English, and Dutch explorers. Uh, quite a few different people, pretty fast. Remember, this is a video, uh, so if it goes too fast, you can always slow it down. And if you need to, you can always pause it. Uh, so with that, We'll jump right in. Now we'll start first with Spain and specifically Christopher Columbus, uh, probably one of the most noteworthy of the early European explorers. Uh, depending on who you talk to, uh, a lot of people view him uh, as a, a hero and, and someone who engaged in groundbreaking work. Uh, some people uh, see him as a villain, uh, just depends on who you're talking to. Uh, in this video, um, I don't really care uh, whether he's a hero or a villain. Just going to talk a little bit about what he did and what that uh, what that meant moving forward. Uh, so uh, the basics, uh, you know, from the previous video, uh, Spain uh, got involved with exploration, uh, somewhat in reaction to some of what Portugal had been up to. Uh, Columbus had the bold idea to sail west across the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, when he was able to get uh, the king and queen of Spain to finance the voyage, uh, he was able to set sail. Um, not a big expedition, three ships total, um, but they left August 3rd, 1492. Uh, things didn't look good along the way. Uh, they ended up uh, at sea for several, uh, or not several, but uh, at sea for uh, over two months uh, before they actually encountered land. Uh, looked like it was on the verge of being a failure, uh, but they did manage to arrive in, in uh, what we know of as the Caribbean region uh, today uh, on October 12th. Now, one of the things that uh, Columbus believed, at least at the time, uh, was that he had reached the East Indies um, and that this was new land, um, at least relative to Spain, uh, claimed it uh, for Spain and uh, gave it the name San Salvador or Holy Savior, which, uh, considering the circumstances they were experiencing at the time, uh, seems like a, a fitting name because I think they were getting to that point where they thought de death was probably the most likely outcome of their voyage. <clears throat> Now, Spain would end up financing several more voyages uh, for Columbus, and that really marked the beginning of, of uh, empire building for Spain, because uh, what had really started off as a, an initial voyage of exploration, uh, once land was found, uh, really became clear that the intent for Spain was to expand the Spanish empire uh, to other parts of the world. Uh, so uh, from that standpoint, uh, Columbus really ushered in a, an, era of, an era of empire building and colonization. Now jumping over to Portugal, uh, we had talked briefly about the line of demarcation in the previous video, which meant that uh, at least the eastern part of what we know of as South America today where Brazil's at would be land that uh, Portugal could have access to, at least according to the Pope and at least according to the agreement between Spain and Portugal. And so Pedro Cabral uh, was uh, notable for Portugal in helping to uh, get started uh, with the present-day country of Brazil, at least in terms of the Portuguese influence um, in that location. Now, Portugal would dedicate most of its attention uh, to finding ways uh, to get to uh, India uh, to make contact with uh, with already established uh, trade arrangements and access to trade goods. Uh, but at least in terms of the idea of moving to the West, uh, Pedro Cabral uh, was definitely a pioneer uh, for Portugal. And then uh, another notable person who worked on behalf of uh, Portugal, who was actually an Italian, but, but did his work on behalf of Portugal, was a guy named Amerigo Vespucci. And really what, what uh, his claim to fame would be is, is maybe even less off of, off of uh, what he achieved specifically, but just in, in really asserting for the first time that this land that was beginning to be explored by these uh, European countries was in fact uh, something altogether new, that it was not some part of Asia that maybe they just weren't familiar with, but it was in fact land that they didn't ever know about before. And it's really from this uh, that the name America comes from, because it was actually a German map maker uh, after 
kind of listening to this information and hearing this assertion from Amerigo Vespucci uh, that he went ahead and, and took his name in, in naming uh, this land on a map. So it's ultimately from America uh, that we get this. I always think that's kind of interesting because uh, it certainly could have been easy for Colombia uh, to to be a name if it was going to be given to the lands over here. And and you know, fast forward to today, you know, it might be the United States of Colombia, you know, North Colombia and South Colombia. Uh, of course, it would seem totally normal uh, if that were the case uh, to us today, uh, but obviously quite different than the America uh, that we're familiar with. All right, so we're ready to take a look at Ferdinand Magellan. Uh, this was an explorer who was actually a, a Portuguese fellow that uh, worked on behalf of Spain. And uh, his big idea was a belief that you really could sail west away from Europe and find an all waterway to where the, the rich stuff was, uh, for lack of a better way of putting it, to, to China, to India, to those locations that they knew about, uh, but were just looking for the most efficient water route possible. Uh, so the King of Spain funded his voyage, and he was able to set out in uh, 1519, five ships, 250 men, and the idea was to sail around South America, uh, which they were able to achieve, and then they headed out into what we know of today as the Pacific Ocean. Now, the Pacific Ocean is significantly larger uh, than the Atlantic Ocean, uh, so that was quite a journey uh, for Magellan and his men to actually make it across the Pacific Ocean. Uh, though they did uh, so successfully, uh, they stopped in a different locations, uh, probably just by random chance, uh, that helped sustain them as they, they passed from uh, one side to the other. Uh, they ultimately landed in where the Philippines is at today. Uh, Magellan himself would actually get involved in a, a local matter there that led to violence and his ultimate death. Um, after that, uh, those that remained uh, as a part of that crew uh, just did what they could to try to make it back home again. As it turns out, about eight, 18 people and one ship made it back to Spain about three years after the journey had started. And uh, even though Magellan didn't make it, uh, this was still pretty groundbreaking uh, just for the knowledge that was gained. Uh, they circumnavigated the globe, uh, which means they made it all the way around uh, the planet. And, and as far as things that they were able to learn, first of all, they learned you could in fact sail around the world, uh, that was possible. And they also learned, and maybe to their disappointment a little bit, uh, that the world was quite a bit bigger than they had imagined. Uh, so as far as being able to get from one place to another pretty quickly and efficiently, uh, they knew that this was a pretty big place and, and that uh, any hopes of just a real quick journey, a real quick water journey from uh, Europe to uh, India and China just wasn't gonna be in the cards, but good information nonetheless. And then lastly, just wanna speak just a little bit to the empire building efforts of Spain uh, to wrap up this video with Fernando Cortez. Uh, he was a, a big part of some of the early em empire building efforts for Spain, uh, getting into uh, the late 15 teens and moving forward. Uh, he would uh, focus on what would uh, eventually become Mexico uh, that we know today. Uh, so he'd be very involved in, in uh, where Central America is at, at least in terms of, of empire building. Now, the one area uh, that he was uh, interested in probably most, uh, more than anything, was acquiring as much gold and silver as possible. And, and where he would go for this uh, was after a civilization uh, that, as he understood it, uh, was extremely wealthy with gold and silver, uh, that being the Aztecs. Now, the Aztecs initially received him pretty well. Uh, they saw him as a god. They actually thought he was a god that they were anticipating arriving, Quetzalcoatl. Um, and, and were actually happy to, to share in the gold that they had and, and to, to really be pretty accommodating uh, to Cortez and his men. Uh, unfortunately uh, for the Aztecs, uh, Cortez wanted an amount of gold that was probably unattainable. In fact, I'm not sure how much gold would have needed to be given to him for him to be, be satisfied. My guess is for every pound of gold he got, he would have wanted 10 more pounds of gold. Uh, so as it turns out, uh, what turned out to be a, a pretty decent reception uh, turned into war and the Spanish uh, were able to basically have their way uh, with the Aztecs uh, in the attempt to try to take all the things that they had. And some of the advantages that the Spanish had uh, were better weapons. Uh, they actually had uh, guns compared to uh, things like arrows uh, that the Aztecs had. Um, also, they were able to, to have support from uh, allies uh, from neighboring groups to the Aztecs. Uh, the Aztecs uh, engaged in some practices such as human sacrifice <laughs> that uh, some of the neighboring people to them didn't really like because they were sometimes the uh, objects of sacrifice. And so the Aztecs had a lot of enemies that were willing to help the Spanish fight against them. And then one of the biggest things, and this is something that will be a big deal uh, throughout the Americas, was disease. Uh, this was something that came with the Europeans that was really nobody's fault, uh, but something we'll talk about in a later video 
is just the, the fact that uh, different parts of the world have been cut off from each other over the centuries. And so new things were being introduced. And unfortunately, disease, uh, which uh, wasn't necessarily as big a killer for people who've been exposed to them for, for many centuries, uh, was a major killer uh, for people who were getting their first exposure. Uh, so when you put it all together, uh, Spain was able to really make some progress with their empire building, uh, despite the fact that they encountered uh, very advanced, uh, very well put together civilizations. All right, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, the next one is going to focus on some of the efforts of France, England, and the Netherlands. Hope you join me.